<laughs> is is not the one that we expect to have uh, on outcome just because knowing a little bit about how how many cylinders a car has and then six uh, 84 and eight uh, 104 here's another count if just picking this cell up same formula taking this data range so then if we were to construct a histogram with this, if you just select this data and create a histogram, then it, it creates our buckets, uh, three to four, four to five, uh, five to five, five to six. Now we can adjust these buckets down here because really we would want them to just be one through eight possibly. But sometimes when you create a histogram in Excel, that can be a little bit tricky to try to get this, uh, this X axis to be exactly what you want it meaning i would like this to just be you know one two three four to eight because it wants to, it needs to have a range so 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 that could be a little bit tricky and so when you see this kind of data sometimes it might be easier to say yeah i would like a histogram but but in, but instead of of making the histogram i would just need a bar chart so it might be easier actually to make this table and then create your histogram from a bar chart based on this table instead of the data set. So we can come down here and say, this is another histogram basically created instead of from this data, from this little table we put together, which sometimes is easier to put together than others. In this case, because like if we had a range between uh, one, uh, zero and one of a bunch of decimals and we don't know what it is, then the range, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult. We need the ranges, we need the buckets. But if you have something like this, now I can say, hey, look, I, I just need eight, eight buckets, right? That are pretty well defined. So I can create a table and then make our, our histogram uh, in this format. So now I just got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And so, and, and this might be a little bit more clear format for us to put it in, recognize just recognizing what the data looks like and making a, a slightly different kind of uh histogram or using a different tool we might trim this down even further and say hey look i don't really need the the ones that don't have anything in it because i only have a few factors so we might cut down the data set to something like this and then and then we might get a little fancy we got a little fancy with the uh with the the colors here so different formats for uh, the histogram. Let's take a look at another one. Uh, in this case, we've got the name and the horsepower. So in contrast with the horsepower, notice that the horsepower might vary a lot more. So so I can't, so it's going to be more difficult to use the two, use the second method we saw last time. So th the general idea, we've got the name and, and then we've got the horsepower. We might try to sort the horsepower from low to high or high to low and that will give us an idea of the horsepower, but we would like to see it, see other information related to it. Here's our standard calculations. Let's do it this time, this way. The average, taking the average, which is summing, adding all of these up and then divided by one, two, three, four, the, the count, right? And then we're gonna take the median, take the one in the middle, just like Rocky, the boxer's coach, told him to hit the one in the middle. That's the one we're gonna do. We're gonna hit the one in the middle and that's the median function. We've got the max, that's the highest one. The function to do that in Excel is simply equals the max, meaning take the highest number in this data set. And the min is just simply gonna be equals the min brackets data set, take the lowest number in the data set. So when we're looking at horsepower, we've got the max 230, the min 46, the average 104, and the one in the middle uh, 994. Now, just looking at these numbers, note that, that like, if this maximum is an outlier, it's like 230, it's, you know, there's, it's not like it's out there all in and of itself. But n re remember that the outliers on the high or the low end could have an impact on the average versus the median. So if you see a big difference between the average and the median, there's not a huge difference here. But if you see a big difference, then your thought process would be, well, maybe there's some outliers that are skewing the average that you need to kind of keep an eye on. So if I look at a pictorial representation of a histogram, we have something that's uh, that's that's skewed to the right because we have the tail end on the right, meaning th the ones out here at uh, 226 to 244, the high horsepower, there's only a few of them out here, right? So we've got kind of the middle 
that's somewhere around here, right? The 104 is the average. So the middle point, if I was to take a teeter totter, you know, and try to put it like at the middle. So this thing balances, you know, left to right uh, kind of thing on the histogram. And there is our spread of the data. So clearly this is going from the low, the buckets 46 to 64, the 64 to 82, the 82 to 100, the 100 to 118, and so on and so forth. Now note, it is possible for us to create a bar chart and recreate this data, but it's not as easy as with the last data because I don't simply have just one through eight different buckets that are well-defined because now I have numbers. You see these numbers, I need a bucket. I need something going from, I can't list every number from 46 up to 244. That would, the chart would be useless. So, so I have to have some kind of range on the buckets. So that means if I was to try to make a, a bar chart histogram, I, I, it would be a little bit more difficult because I would then have to make the ranges myself and then use a little bit more complicated, it's still doable, but you have to do a little bit more complicated uh, uh, calculation to pick up the numbers that are between a certain range. That's still a useful tool to do. We'll do it in Excel uh, in future presentations because sometimes you might want a bar chart even when you're using the ranges because you might, for example, want to have two bar charts on top of each other. And that might be easier to do than, uh, than with the histograms. You might have a little bit more flexibility if you create your own table, in other words, and then create a bar chart with it than you do with uh, the histogram tools. So we'll take a look at those in future presentations.